of gold bugs, gold traders. Uh, I think it was an exciting week this week, and it looks like the gold markets are going to get even more exciting uh, as we go forward. Uh, big moves in the precious metals. Uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that against a certain fiat currencies, gold was already making all-time record highs, right? One was the Kiwi or the New Zealand dollar when we broke above 3,000 here again in Kiwi dollar terms or New Zealand dollar terms. The Japanese yen made new record highs a while back. Indian rupee made uh, record highs a while back. The British pound also made record highs in the past. And you can sort of see where we are right now. We're just actually retesting, uh, you know, the breakout zone now turn support. We also talked about the Australian dollar uh, making new all-time record highs. Well, two more currencies now we can add to that list. One is the Hong Kong uh, dollar, which just barely made new record highs there. Just very, very uh, small amount there. Um, and another one is, of course, very near and dear to me. And that is the Canadian dollar. The Canadian loony did uh, make new all-time record highs here. And you can see at time of recording, quite a large sell-off in gold um, pullback, right? Possibly a pullback, or is this a major rejection? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but the two charts that are garnering a lot of attention now, uh, well, one, right? Maybe one is just the one I, I'm, I'm watching is, is against the Chinese yuan because we are uh, you know, still in an uptrend and possibly going to make new all-time record highs against the Chinese yuan in a few weeks. But of course, it's gold versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, and I will take you guys to a weekly chart. because This is what we've talked about in the past. I'm just going to remove this on the daily chart. Let's go zoom out to the weekly chart. And, you know, this was a trident that we drew way back in the day. We talked about that bounce here as support, this new uptrend, higher lows, higher highs. Then we are expecting another higher low breaking us out into new all-time record highs against the U.S. dollar. So the that play is still um, intact. And uh, we're watching this zone here. Again, the 1950-ish uh, trend line zone here, which is acting as support. We'll look at it in the on uh, the daily chart in just a bit here. But there is some danger. Well, I don't want to say danger, but uh, this pullback here, right? So the sell-off that we are seeing here uh, after we tested this Previous record highs here, um, you know, was expected because that's generally where traders or bulls are taking their profits and potentially some sellers are entering for a short to make some money. But I think right now this is just going to be an expected uh, pullback in gold. And, and, you know, you can see I say a pullback, but even though we're getting a pretty, pretty strong uh, red day today. You can see that the buyers are stepping in around the 2000 zone, uh, which is where I actually had my line before I uh, deleted it. But uh, obviously 2000, very important psychological number. Uh, I, I just bring it up to 2004 there because I think it fits the candles a bit better. You know, you can always go down to a line chart just to uh, play connect the dots to see where your support and resistance levels are. So, uh, you know, just, just a pullback here, in my opinion, and I think this is setting us up for a potential rally uh, higher into gold, and uh, that means new all-time record highs uh, against the U.S. dollar, and, you know, a lot of people are wondering why, why that's happening. Of course, the financial media is talking about it's because the Fed is now, uh, you can't say the word dovish, right, because it's still technically a hawkish uh, pause. But a lot of people are saying or said earlier even in this year that gold is going to break into new record highs because the Fed is eventually going to stop raising interest rates. And because, you know, gold doesn't yield anything, um, it, it tends to do better when uh, interest rates are lower, right? So obviously, you know, interest rates are quite high in the, in, the, in the U.S. and around the world, and it doesn't yield anything. Gold doesn't yield anything, but look, look what it's doing, right? Look at the price action. So is this more of gold front running, uh, rate cuts in the future, a Fed play, or is, is there something else going on, right? Generally, money will run into gold when there's a confidence crisis. Uh, perhaps people are worried about the banking sector. Uh, perhaps people are worried about you know, geopolitics, uh, what's going on in Europe, that kind of stuff. 
but uh, definitely something to keep an eye out on. And um, what I've been writing about recently is when I look at gold moving like this, I, I look at a few other currencies and a few other assets as well, right? So we, we look at TLT just to see where what bonds are doing, and they haven't really been doing much uh, because you know money tends to run into bonds for safety sometimes. Although people like Ray Dalio said that doesn't make sense because bonds you know yield very very little. Uh, you know, you might as well buy gold as your safe haven, right? Because uh, gold can actually fluctuate a lot more, which can provide you with a better return if you're trading it or holding it for the longer term. Um, and I also look at two other currencies. I look at the Japanese yen, which um, some people call it, you know, the safe haven from the safe haven or the safe haven from the U.S. dollar. And um, it's, it's well known that there's a very strong core, positive correlation uh, between the Japanese yen and also gold, right? You can, you can take a look at that. So gold and the yen can sometimes move together. A lot of money runs to the yen, you know, for this for this safety because of how, I guess, politically stable uh, Japan is. Um, so we had a bit of a move lower in, in the yen, but, you know, I can't say it's uh, something to bet a, a, a reversal on because you can see that the, the move is quite strong. Uh, the recovery is quite strong. And it just looked like this was a, a, a move lower in an uptrend, so just a retracement in an uptrend, and the buyers are now stepping back in. And then the other currency uh, I look at, you know, for safe haven sort of status is the, um, Aus the not the Australian dollar, but the Swiss franc. So, uh, you know, the Swiss franc was actually very, it has been very, very strong recently. You can see here uh, making gains against the Australian dollar. Um, you know, for, for those of you who are into Forex, when this is moving lower, uh, the second currency, these uh, second currency, and in this case, that is the Swiss franc, is gaining or appreciating, while the first currency, the Australian dollar, is depreciating. Um, <clears throat> for my Canadian friends, you know, there was a big uh, discussion about the Swiss franc making new all-time record highs against the Canadian loonie, but it looks like there's a reversal here now in the loonie as well. And then if you look at the franc against the U.S. dollar as well, you know, the franc has been very, very strong after hitting uh, parity and uh, take a look at you know the price action still very choppy but uh, maybe we are building a, a, a base here so with this move now in you know the yen and the, the swiss franc that we are seeing right now uh there is a case to be made that gold could retrace a bit further below just because of what we're seeing but any of that can you know change at any time uh due to headlines right or or, or some sort of effect um, but going forward, as we said, the technicals are still in play. We are in a technical uptrend in gold, and any move lower right now is still considered a retracement or a correction, which means I don't want to be shorting gold uh, right now. I would be looking for longs. Um, if gold did break below, you know, this trend line that I've drawn around the 1960-ish zone, uh, that's when I would start considering uh, potential short position in gold, right? But right now, I just want to play the uptrend, and I'm considering this just a uh, retracement um, uh, or a correction in the uptrend. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to play this, and of course, I'm going to move down to the, the daily, uh, sorry, the one-hour chart here. Uh, I'm going to look at the previous higher low, right? So you can say that there's one right here around the 2037 zone. So I'm just going to patiently sort of wait for that to be taken out. Um, another way to play this is going down to the shorter time frame, the 15 minute time frame, and you can sort of see how, you know, where I drew on the one hour is exactly where the uh, lower high is here on the 15 minute as well, right? Maybe you can even bring it down just a few dollars there to like 238. But that's the way I'm going to play it, right? I'm going to wait for the current lower high in this retracement to be taken out because the dominant trend is an uptrend, which means we're expecting higher lows and higher highs. So I'm still very, uh, you know, positive on gold here. I like what I am seeing. Uh, could be a bit of a retracement. A lot of people might be making an argument that this is a large red engulfing candle. Um, it is closer, yes, to resistance. Um, there was an engulfing candle here as well, and you can see gold didn't really just sell off. It just held on range for a bit until we got more banking headlines and other headlines uh, to take us higher. So uh, I would watch this 2000 level. We're still positive on gold. I think we're going to be making new all-time record highs against the U.S. dollar. 
And uh, that means that I think only the Swiss franc and uh, potentially that Chinese yuan are sort of like the major currencies that, uh, that we'll be watching for, for gold to make new all-time record highs against the fiat currency. So uh, that's it for me, folks. Well, actually, let's look at silver. I know there's some silver fans here too, right? So let's take a look at silver. Um, our technicals are still in play, right? The uptrend that we had there, we had this downtrend trend line, which broke out a while back said that that is a very, very bullish sign for silver. We even came back to retest this 24.50 zone, uh, which, you know, we range here for quite a day. Look at all these wicks here just indicating that the buyers are stepping in. And now we're just waiting for that breakout above uh, recent highs, which we created back in mid-April of 2023. Um, we are back above 25 an ounce against the U.S. dollar term. And we're just waiting for a candle close here above 26 which would give us, uh, you know, a move at least to the 27, 27.50 zone, but I have a large resistance level here around 28. So silver is very look, is looking very bullish as well. Uh, both the metals are looking very bullish. Um, and we're just going to wait for that breakout. A uh, bit of a retracement right now. However, the uptrend remain intact. Uh, and we are just going to be, you know, I hate to use that term, but buying the dips, right, when we, when we play with the contracts here for gold and silver. But as I just showed you with gold, uh, we don't blindly buy the dip. We wait for that technical lower high on the intraday charts to be taken out before we go long. Uh, but that's it for me, folks. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below if you believe gold is going to make new all-time record highs against the US dollar. And I'll catch you guys all in the next Card Attack video.